everyone is thinking of that they'll start off their business. So what India is Now, when we talk about startups, so you must be thinking, like you must be planning to start your own venture or looking for growth or diversification. Because we all know that patents take a lot of time, but now they have um,
it is also further divided into sales you want to do the sales of uh, maybe solar modules or you want to do the onm operations and maintenance of uh, solar parks or uh, maybe anything of your sort of your choice then the second point is check the permits or license required currently gst is one of the main important things which is required then every state and the center has its own set of requirements then educate yourself and your team about the business few courses are available on various government and non government websites and there's a link provided and you can also find certain courses on linkedin learning and etc then investigate your potential suppliers this is one of the main thing because when we uh, for example we have a solar epc company and when we go for a procurement or uh, we want to procure raw materials from anyone we have to make sure that the quality of the product is up to the mark because we cannot compromise on the quality so that is one of the main things that you should investigate your potential suppliers that from whom you are procuring your materials from and what is the quality which they are offering the second one is create business and marketing plan acquire necessary capital for your business if you don't have enough assets there are various potential investors which are looking for ideal business investments startup india website that helps you find angel investors and the website link is given below the last point is knowing your customer and executing your business and marketing ideas this is very important then what are the stages of startup development there are five stages of startup development the first one is research analyze your competition get to know your customers find out as much as possible about the market you are going to enter second one is form idea to mvp release a product with minimal effect effort focus on on delivering the basic functionality to test the assumption third getting traction invest in marketing to get your first users make the customer talk about your product this attracts fresh traffic and this is one of the most important thing when customers talk about your product talk about your company that has a different impact on the market rather than we ourselves marketing we ourselves doing marketing of the company so the next point is keep improving your product we all know that technology keeps on changing every day so it is very important that we focus on the kind of product which we are delivering and bring changes to the product every now and then so that it suits the market so analyze your current results listen to user feedback and think of possible improvements never stop working on the product the next one is aiming for maturity measure everything you do calculate your rate of interest customer acquisition cost etc and focus on improving these numbers so the stages is from idea to mvp to a successful business then seven steps to grow your startup the first one is stay true to your core purpose second one is be selective for opportunities there will be a lot of opportunities in the market but you have to make sure you choose the right opportunity you select the right opportunity and you focus on the right opportunity the third one is state the vision and mission of the company it is very important for you to you know state and know the vision and mission of the company because this is something which will lead you to success then focus on sales the fifth one is get your priorities straight sixth one is motivate everyone for the vision it is very important for a company it is the most important feature for a company that all the employees of the company work towards the vision of the company if each and every single person of the company work towards the vision of the company success is 100% guaranteed the seventh point is hire and train the employee now what are the growth strategies we have four growth strategies firstly if the product is existing and the market is existing market penetration increase present customer rate of use attract customers from from com, from competitors attract non users if the product is existing and the market is new expand geographically reach into new market segments then if the product is new and the market is existing add new features to the product develop additional models develop new products and if the product is new and the market is new then keep the fit diversify into totally new areas then step by step process for startup recognition 
government has laid out different different steps for startup recognition the first one is entity creates an account on startup india website you need to create an account on startup india website the second one is the entity then applies for the dp double it recognition this is very important the third one is application gets reviewed and the certificate of recognition is issued to completed applications within 48 to 72 working hours so imagine how fast the indian government is working when they say that they'll be issuing a certificate of recognition within 48 to 72 working hours then what are the details you must be thinking that what are the details required for filling up the recognition form so there are only six details which you require the first one is incorporation details such as incorporation number date of recognition permanent account number that is your pan name of the registered entity private limited company or a limited liability partnership or a registered partnership firm then proof of concept such as a pitch deck website link video in case of a validation early traction scaling start scaling stage startup then the third one is brief about the entity with details on the problem solved solution provided uniqueness and revenue model adapted the fourth one is incorporation registration certificate which you will get in 42 48 to 72 hours then the director details complete director details are required in this other information about the entity like the sector the patent details the stage the number of employees etc all these are very important to provide the next thing is there is absolute no requirement of letter of recommendation from anywhere and there is no requirement of sanction letter additional or optional information which you must have is that the startup at ideation stage can simply apply without any proof of concept and obtain recognition startups can also update their proof of funding awards and recognitions received startups can strengthen their applications by by providing patent trademark copyright or plant variety of details then startups can also add a video of their products and services so it is basically you need to highlight your company your startup the work which you are doing the sector you which you are aiming at and the recognitions which you've got the products and the services which you are giving then what is the process for funds for startup the first one is the eligibility screener and registration you need to register and they and you need to be eligible for that thing then there will be a set of preliminary questions which will be there which will be handed over to you there will be a first meeting scheduled in which you will be given a feedback whether you can proceed for the funding or you cannot then there will be a detailed application this is process like due diligence is completed here and uh, then appraisal memo submission second meeting feedback and terms and discussions they help you in telling you like you need to do this and what all extra is required in the current application then you present to vc investment committee then sit these executive committees there then final feedback which is done and then on board for the fund life cycle there are different state startup policies we'll talk about 2014 and 2015 we talk about kerala in 2014 so the highlight of this was that the policy balances both fiscal and non fiscal incentives such as establishing at least 10 incubators or accelerators developing 1 million square feet of incubation space venture capital funding of minimum rupees 2000 crores etc and what was the support of india startup it was it facilitated it facilitated cross subject learning among the states kerala shared its practices in the procurement conducted regional knowledge workshop for sharing best practices of the ecosystem among the states and few more points <clears throat> then we talk about gujarat the major highlight of this was that gujarat was among the first few states to have announced a startup innovation startup and innovation policy in 2015 The Startup India support was vibrant Gujarat Startup Summit in 2019 was conducted to sensitize ecosystem enablers advisory on incorporating best practices within startup ecosystem conducted Startup India meet in Ahmedabad then in 2016 we saw a lot of states turning up like Telangana Odisha Jharkhand Madhya Pradesh Uttar Pradesh so i'll just talk about the Startup India support quickly uh, when we talk about Telangana collaboration during world design assembly 59th edition support in terms of outreach of their startup focus event in jharkhand 
the startup india support was advisory on incorporating best practices within startup ecosystem conducted mentorship workshop for startups in the region when we talk about uttar pradesh advisory on incorporating best practices within the startup when we talk about odisha the uh, assistance in formulation of state startup policy assistance in conceptualizing district level infrastructure support for startup and structuring the proposed odisha startup fund when we talk about madhya pradesh assistance in sharing the seed fund models available across various governments conducted a startup investor facilitation uh, sessions in the state then in 2017 and 18 there were different uh, states like punjab bihar haryana and assam in 2017 so uh, punjab has formed a strategic alliance with diverse organizations to foster innovation and startup growth such as scpi mohali state development state department of industries and commerce isb and punjab technical university for setting up startup punjab hub and haryana haryana state provide 50% rental subsidy to women entrepreneurs at state supported incubator so this is a very big step with uh, from the haryana government that they are promoting women entrepreneurs then we talk about bihar as part of its policy it provide reimbursement for incubating a startup up to rupees 2 lakhs per incubate to government recognized private and state supported incubator in assam assam startup policy in uh envisions to facilitate to uh, facilitate at least 1000 new startups across all sectors over the next 5 years and attract funding opportunities of usd 250 million for state based startups and incubators then in 2018 jammu kashmir uttarakhand maharashtra andaman and nicobar islands tamil nadu they all joined in so when we talk about jnk more than 2000 state startups have benefited from seed capital fund scheme when we talk about maharashtra the policy envisions to transform maharashtra by catalyzing the growth of an innovation driven entrepreneurs ecosystem to achieve wholesome and inclusive socio economic development uttarakhand the policy aims to facilitate and nurture the growth of at least 500 men when we talk about andaman and nicobar the uh, union territory aims to provide a startup growth grant of up to 3 lakhs to startups Tamil Nadu the state targets to create 1 lakh high skill job creation direct and indirect in the startup ecosystem by 2023 lastly in Nagaland when we talk about 2019 the policy aims to facilitate growth of at least 500 startups in the next 5 years with a focus on made in Nagaland products financial grants up to rupees 3 lakh shall be provided to the projects recommended by incubators established by government private sector academic institutions as a startup grant in puducherry when we talk about meghalaya the policy aims to establish an innovation fund uh, to foster research in information and communication technology and energy tourism etc in the in state institutions the fund will be utilized to facilitate technology transfer and commercialization in institutions so that was from our side if you have any more doubts if you want to know anything about how to set up a business or you have any business ideas which you want to discuss or you want to partner with sorry with the technology we are a complete solar epc firm and a lithium ion battery manufacturer will be more than happy to help you guide you and will be more than happy to be your one of the best suppliers So thank you. This is uh, this is what we have from our side. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you for sharing your experience with all of us, sir. You shared quite useful insights about the sector with us. Uh, we will be taking the questions at the end of the webinar. So please keep sure. posting your questions in the chat box. Now we'll move on to our next eminent speaker, Mr. Nareesh Bazar, who is the co-founder of the GSC Renewables and is a CS, CMA finance and a lawyer. Sir, over to you, sir. Yeah. Can everybody hear me? Ah, uh, yeah, I can hear, sir. Yeah. So I am not presenting anything because it's not required because I'm talking about financing the project in solar project. Uh, so first of all, I'll talk about my company. Then I will talk about uh, the other aspects and models in this uh, solar project. And uh, Sushant has presented very well about startups. So I don't think I need to touch on that part. 
So when we talk about GAC and your group, we are 100 plus, 100 plus old group of company. Previously, we were into five business, then we were into uh, shoe business. Then thereafter, we started our journey from Solar from 2014-15. So relatively, we are not startup, but a company which is uh, have experience more than of five to six years. And when we talk about our exposure, so we have we installed projects in capex model, opex model, and uh, we invest in the project. So our role is to do EPC job as a developer and to play as a part as a EPC player as well, right? So when we talk about uh, solar industry, uh, solar project can be installed in various ways. So number one is the capex model in which whole investment is done by the optaker who is the power user. Uh, he will put all his money and solar project will be installed which will, which will include solar panels, inverters, uh, cables, structures, and other miscellaneous projects. Um, product. And when we talk about OPEX, uh, this is the second uh, model in which a solar project can be installed. In the OPEX, power user will not invest any money. Whole investment will be done by a, 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 what we call a power producers, uh, the owner of the project and the seller of the project. He will invest whole project on the premises of the obstacle. It can be ground mount, it can be rooftop, but investment will be the from optaker. So we call it boot model or we call it OPEX model in which whole investment is done by power producer. And the third model is the deferred capex, which is basically like kind of installment or EMI model in which a uh, whole investment will be done by a power user, but there will be a financial institution or bank in the role who will take a EMI from the power user on yearly basis that can be for five years or it can be for seven years, and but whole investment will be from the power user. So the power user can take advantage that whatever the generation will be done by solar project in the year, he, he can take that advantage and he can pay that EMI on the basis of that uh, amount he is saving in the electricity bill. So this is the model which is there in the different capex. So the, these are the models, uh, OPEX, capex, and different capex. And third, and but not the least, is the open access. In the open access, it's like uh, relatively very different from capex and opex, uh, which is installed on the rooftop of the project. Uh, it can be uh, it can be structured in a way where we, you can install whole solar project in the remote area, and from that area, the generation will be uplifted and built from the government facilities, and from there you can utilize the uh, generation which you are getting in your factory, but there is no requirement to put the solar pro project in your own premises, uh, which can be your rooftop or which can be your ground, but solar project will be installed very far away, but it has to be in one own state. That is the main primary condition. Uh, then uh, there are different charges which government applies. It can be cross subsidy charges, surcharge, or any other additional charges. It depends on state to state. So this is the model in which you can install for solar project. In the open, open access, you can divide into two. Number one is the group captive. Number two is the captive consumption by solar project, uh, solar power user. In the group captive, it's like one power producer install 100 or 200 of megawatt big plant and it supplies generation to different companies uh, or industries. Uh, but it's not related to only one particular company, it can be given to different companies altogether, right? So it's totally different. Uh, but uh, in the group captive, 26% uh, of the total cost of the solar project has to be taken from the power user, and the balance investment will be done by the power producer. But there is one condition that is 51% of total amount, 51% uh, of total generation has to be used by power user. It is the primary condition which is uh, incorporated by the government of the India, uh, electricity electricity department of the country. Uh, so this is the condition in the group captive and the captive consumption. In the captive consumption, whole investment will be done by the power user, but a plant will be not in its premises. Plant will be far away, but it, but the investment will be by the power user. Now let's uh, go to the topic which uh, which is given to me about financing the solar project. So nowadays, uh, when we talk about, since we are in this industry since uh, uh, five to six years now, so now we are vastly experienced that how things flow and uh, what are the challenges we are facing in the 
hold you cold. So uh, when we talk about financing the project, we talk about OPEX project especially or group captive in the case of open access. So let's talk about op OPEX first. So in the case of the OPEX, when uh, when any company, let's say GSC, when GSC wants to uh, quote any particular tariff to the client, uh, to the optaker, right? So let's say GSC quote four rupees. There are other players in the market who are quoting like 3.5, 3.6. But the problem uh, in that situation is that company is hampering uh, the quality of the project. Why? Because PPA 10 years are like for 10 years, 15 years, or 20 years. So if the plant can be installed for 10 years and the tariff is so low, then the like likely possibility is that particular developer or that particular uh, what we call uh, uh, IPP is not looking for 25 or 30 years of durability of the project. So this is the biggest challenge which can which is facing which which, which is faced by our country. And where we talk about our goal till 2022. Uh, that is uh, uh, to have approximately 120 gigawatts. It's very challenging because big players are big players are ruining the market by by putting the giving the very low rate. And in the recent times, the price of the modules and the inverters and the other materials is really spiked up. So for the small players and for the startups, it's very challenging. But we have to pass through. We have to uh, we have to look at our quality. We have to look at our team management. We have to look at our Operations team and asset management team and uh, our ONM team that how they are performing their activities and how we are cost effective with regards to that uh, particular uh, scenario that how things are happening and how it need to be structured in particular way. So this is the highlight which I can give about what is happening in the uh, solar industry and how things are happening with regards to OPEX model. And uh, when we talk about and the second aspect of the financing is that. Uh, there are different players in the market who, who who are offering their services to the off-taker. One is IPP, indiv individual power producer, who invest whole money and put uh, put all the asset on their books. So it's their primary business. Second is the developer. Uh, the developer, what developer do? They install whole project. Initially, they will take the project on their books, and then they flip to the project to a IPP or another HNI or to any family office. And there are other players can be uh, individual equity investor who is investing in the solar project. Uh, just they are having their own business, other businesses, but they just want to explore solar. So they just invest in the solar project by by putting their own money. So this is the another model in which it can be done. So thank you all. So this, these are my views with regards to solar project, how we are installing, how it can be done. Yeah, thank you, Sardar. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for your informative presentation. This will definitely be a valuable insight for our participants. Now we'll move further towards our next speaker, Mr. Ganesh Gauri, who is the Assistant Manager of Solar PV Lab and Advisory Services. Over to you, sir. Hello, am I audible? Hello. Uh, yeah, sir, you are audible, sir. Okay. I'm sharing my screen. Uh, so I'm not able to see your. Uh, I'm not able yeah, to I, see you, sir. I haven't shared it yet, but yeah, I'm sharing it.
Hello, sir. Uh, you are not audible. Okay, actually, it's taking time. Just a minute. Hmm. There is no screen sharing option. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, just a minute. Yeah, there is no. I can't see any screen sharing. Meanwhile, sir, actually, you sir, yeah. sir, actually, you are not uh, presenting, sir. You can, uh, you have to uh, present, sir. You have to share your screen, sir. No, here I can't uh, find that option. But now the presenter is Mr. Bharatwas. You must, you have to change the presenter to Mr. Ganesh. Uh, okay, ma'am, uh, doing it. I can't see any presenter in screen. Yeah, uh, sir, uh, we, are do we are doing it, sir. Okay, so my screen visible as Hello. Yes, sir, it is visible. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sorry for the short delay. And uh, I'll, uh, very good morning to all. And my name is uh, Ganesh Gauri, uh, assistant manager, uh, working, working as assistant manager in C Chemicals. India Private Limited and Solar PV Advisory Division. Okay, uh, just want to uh, share our presence in PV industry and some milestones. So, uh, so Mitsu Chemicals uh, has more than uh, 30 years experience in BA and Texting. And uh, so moving forward, then we, we also own some uh, solar and wind hybrid power plants in Japan. And uh, and also we collaborated with PA Berlin to, to get the know-how of establishing the PV lab. And, uh, and our, uh, uh, we are, our, um, our affiliated company, uh, Dr. Shiroda San, he's an uh, expert in IEC technical committee groups. So that is uh, 
of the background of mixed chemicals in the industry. Whereas our milestones are we set up our lab in 2019 and then uh, we got an ABM recognition, which is uh, which add confidence and trust to the customers, and then BAS recognition, which is mandated by MNR and CAS. And then here yeah, we also started uh, some due diligence and diagnostics business. And in future, we are also plan to roll out our IEC other things as well. And overall, uh, we have executed uh, more than uh, 60 projects and 55 satisfied customers. And we address many uh, uh, solutions. We address solutions to the uh, many problems. So, and we have diversified team. I mean, diversified team having background from plan of science and so on. Okay, this is the just background uh, network of labs of Mixi and PA. So, we we are currently stationed at uh, Ahmedabad with the. Uh, 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 we have 51 square feet uh, lab, which is uh, I think in the world, this is the biggest lab for dedicated for photovoltaics. And our part and our Mitsui campus, Japan also having lab, and uh, yeah, they are not having, they have partial lab, they are not having computer. And they do basically due diligence activities, technical due diligence of power plants and all. And PABL, of course, they are our partners, and PA China also having lab. So this is just network of labs. And next slide, please. Yeah, coming to uh, the topic of uh, yeah, I will start with quality and cost, and then I will also do some glimpses on uh, startup challenges and in especially solar PV sector because uh, being in a solar PV industry for more than seven years, so I am very uh, yeah, I have more predominant experience in solar photo. So I just want to share our experiences in solar photovoltaics. So basically, yeah, this is a quality cost uh, balance. So generally, uh, in India, mostly we, we neglect quality because the trade-off triangle is quality, uh, cost, and time. So we we majorly focus on cost and time, but not on quality. So, but the uh, negligence in the quality will definitely. Uh, impact long term business. hello sir uh, you are not audible hello hello yeah, am i audible now hello yeah 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 so uh, you can i repeat from the beginning or just this slide i was not audible no no uh, you don't need to repeat current slide. yeah current slide i will repeat so yeah uh basically uh indian perspective we generally see only two uh, parameters in the, uh this time cost quality uh, parameter angle trade off triangle so generally we uh in india mostly we neglect quality aspect so so okay yeah so emphasis on the quality uh this is on the quality aspects in this uh, webinar so what are the costs of poor quality what are the yeah failure cost and what are the sales reduction business loss and so on and so forth so yeah with this background i just want to go yeah this is a strength on the quality like there are there are several standards uh, which are set already. BAS has mandated some standards for IES 14206 and 61730. Basically, that is for design and safety qualification. And then, and uh, for designing power plant itself, there are uh, some more standards like 6500 and 6730. And then, and operation and maintenance commissioning part, there are 6446 standards. And, and uh, performance indicators are 61724. So basically, uh, the kind of challenges uh, every startup company faces is like, first of all, the design thinking itself, because the idea, starting from the idea. So the idea to uh, implementation, the, the major gap is, uh, yeah, so so one is like we, we have everyone having ideas, but yeah, ultimately from 
developing idea and making to materialization it will take lot of efforts and there are lot of uncertainties related in this like uh, technical uncertain process related uncertainties material related uncertainties and market uncertainties and financial uncertainties so so these are the some of the major hurdles uh, uh, to any startup and and of course solar lab of our uh, solar lab of mixi india is also like a startup and we have also seen a lot of ups and downs in during uh, establishment and accreditations and even uh, covid in covid situation also so yeah so basically one should know each and every uh, step and uh, the uncertainties related to each and every uh, stage because that will uh, eradicate major hurdles or at least if we get to know if we measure the patients are pretty fast and the standards are actually lack because the standards basically they draw a reference line where from which the basically uh, everyone can can give the harmonized results so standard said that uh stage to everyone the level playing field to everyone to to deliver the harmonized results so the market is really dynamic and there are uncertainties okay uh so especially uh this presentation we just want to touch upon few th- few uh stakeholders like manufacturers bankers investors and uh, yeah and developer insurance agencies and all so yeah basically we want we will show you some failures which we have seen because the pv market in india is still name so there are uh, many we are yet to be mature like uh, yeah european con- uh, european and other continents they are already other countries they are well matured they are already uh, seen the failures and they are, they are evolve, evolving into uh, good, uh, perform yeah good quality material so basically this slide shows the various uh, uh, standards uh, related to from component level to model level and system level and uh, yeah we uh, basically for uh, each component uh, the testing is a must and every component which is entering into india so there should the uh, testing is mandatory made by mnre and bs jointly so so yeah these are the some standard numbers like glass encapsulant solar cells and, and back sheet connectors cables and so on so forth and module level once the design is done then design and safety qualification and reliability of the module uh, so and uh, energy rating pad and letad so new new uh, due to the new technologies new failures also uh, developing in the market and in the system level uh, also there are lot of standards like uh, for designing of the and so 6548 off grid and on grid 6738 and for uh, commissioning 62446 and uh, yeah so this is the screenshot yeah and after post commissioning the performance indicator is 6722 so what actually uh, the standards and why there are necessary and uh, and all uh, this slide will depicts uh, it will try to yeah this slide will explain why the standards are necessary and and why the mnre and other uh, regulatory bodies are uh, made in mandate to undergo this testing so basically for, uh, this is an example of a table and uh, uh, where the draw, the components are like drawers and all this so so if we purchase even uh, individually components separately and then we combine together so the output will be like this so the the, the table will be ready but the, there will be no uh, standard or no no uniform uh, in company and all so whereas the right side the example is uh, we have table we have drawers and uh, but here uh, so the quality the testing and the metrology also follow so uh, so basically it's like uh, uh, measuring each and every dimension and then harmonizing and then assembling the uh, desk with the drawer so that that, that will uh, provide the uniform and harmonized uh, results so that's why manufacturers and uh, new manufacturers or new entrants in the market they have to first of all uh, should know uh, whether the standards have been met or not uh, for bp modules and all from starting from the module to the power plant level so like i have shown in my previous slide 
so this is one example and then uh, so basically labs uh, and our man labs are just one step higher than manufacturers so basically they we we do calibrations we 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 maintain reference standards based uh, and we we uh, we give the reference standards we transfer the quality to the manufacturer so that they can also have the traceability of unbroken chain up to the international standards so this is one such example like uh, how pyramids uh, have been built and with that much consistency and uh, yeah with accuracy and all so basically they they follow the they also used to uh, uh, calibrate the wooden cubes in uh, full moon day so so that yeah this kind and they used to calibrate it every 15 days so that uh, reduces the error and uh, and eventually the pyramids now which is one of the uh, seventh wonders in the world so basically that they have taken a lot of time and they really uh, quantified the errors and they uh, they removed they eliminated the errors and they so they, yeah this these are the approaches and they are, these are the live examples which are which have been said uh, by our ancient people yeah so now i will move ahead uh, with some of the failures which we have uh, observed in the our testing and yeah uh, basically we'll show you mostly on pv models testing uh, so this uh, so normal standard tests will not uh, fulfill uh, the reliability means they they can't reproduce the reliability issues so basically the reliability testing uh, uh yeah so extend iec and all they from from which we can get the life cycle of the model or lifetime uh lifespan of the model basically how much there are like performance warranties are there there are product warranties also there so without a uh, product the performance will not exist so so the product should first of all uh, withstand the uh, accelerating tests and and stress conditions so basically we, some of uh, the project extended you see project uh, we have found that back sheet was started cracking and and uh, you can see the uh, back sheet also become yellow maybe screen to screen it may vary but yes yeah, screen yellowing and cracking was we have seen so this is one uh, defect and uh, another uh, extended you see project we have uh seen that interconnects have been broken the initial picture in the on the left and the right side is the post uh, tc600 you can see the interconnects are completely isolated and the uh, and the power loss happened so these are the reliability indicators and and uh, next thing is the nameplate actually so basically uh, the uh, uncertainties uh, starting from material selection process and and uh, equipment measurements and even uh, testing lab so what are reference uh, reference material standards they said so these all uh, together they ca contribute to the uncertainties and the nameplates uh, basically yeah now the nameplates are uh, uh, bit more stringent like now mostly we will see positive tolerance only no zero negative tolerance and positive uh, tolerance side so basically the nameplate uh, tolerance we have we have tested more than 60 projects in the last year so this is just a tr trend of uh, how the tolerances have been changed see the so most of the when we keep the three percent tolerance most of the manufacturers are outside this band so which is not a good sign uh, for the pv market whereas in five percent tolerance yeah most of them are uh, sitting inside this uh, span so basically this indicates that the tolerance uh, still the nameplate tolerances uh, will not match actually in, in actual scenario so that is the uh outcome of this so so everyone has to verify the stakeholders our end user has to ver verify the output uh, before uh, going to yeah, purchase and all and then this is a uh, one uh wrong selection of material itself so so my uh, one uh, customer has uh, uh by mistaking uh, somehow they they have used thousand volts back sheet where and whereas they asked us to test for 1500 volts so so you can see the uh, this is these are basically el images it's like x-ray of uh, uh, modules so we we can see cracks or degradations from the x-ray so you can see the module after several rounds so it was completely uh, dead so 
so this these are some risks actually uh, concerning to the material selection and all so that's the objective and of this and then uh, we have compiled together the history of the and failure trees failures happened in the p models uh, and components basically so p model consists of lot of components as i have shown in my previous slide so this is the failure tree so so we uh, certainly everyone has to maintain the failure tree so failure is not uh, like dead end so it is a just opportunity for improvement so it's like betterment uh, to the uh, yeah so it's a betterment uh, to the yeah products so basically we should consider as a positive manner failure means so yeah so and yeah to avoid that mnre has uh, issued a uh, quality control order to uh, to yeah to limit the poor quality imports from chinese manufacturers and all and yeah this is uh, some statistics i just want to show yeah like uh, uncertainties which contributes to the measurements as i mentioned in the last slide so 3% 5% so the basically the statistical distribution when we measure like more than uh, thousands of models so how the how the distribution uh, uh, represents so this is the slides and yeah i just want to skip some slides which are uh, not relevant i don't want to go in detail also and yeah this is uh, one another example of uh, hotspot uh, for certification and uh, and we when we taken randomly from the lot the always of course everyone uh, sends a good samples for testing whereas uh, in pro production the quality deteriorates or maybe the b1 changes and also the quality is uh, will not maintain uh, as shown or as uh, committed in the documents or on the data sheets and further uh, random related things uh, so so basically we uh, so nowadays the random uh, things also operation and maintenance uh, really taken a lot of boom and especially robotic cleanings so robotic cleanings and due to shortage of manpower in the covid scenario so the robotic cleaning has to uh, really uh, big way so so it it actually it uh, improve, improves the um, prs and capacity utilization factors and also and it doesn't require much effort so robo automatically in the evening so it can they, they they can clean automatically and they can come to dock docking station and there are several robots already and uh, yeah we also tested uh, i think four five types of robots so far so yeah and this is the impact of dust so soil is the first major uh, 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 performance killer in pv power plants as far as pv power plants are concerned so so the depreciation of a uh, yeah, power plant will also majorly impacts due to soiling and the loss also we we, we have quantified the loss per kilowatt per uh, and to megawatt and even more than uh, several megawatt tens of megawatts so the the may the more the, the the larger the size of the power plant and uh, the more the more the soil will more impact will be there so so nowadays more, most of the players are adopting this robotic cleaning simulation systems so for 10 megawatt the loss is almost like 1 million uh, uh, inr so that is a huge amount uh, so yeah that is one thing and yeah uh, so related to lab lab errors so so far we have discussed about some uh, uh, material related errors and and then power plant random related errors so lab errors also how to uh, like being a new startup uh, lab so we have first of all validated measurements we have undergone pt with siri singapore and we have verified uh, where we are standing actually and you see the uh, all measurements are actually uh, very precise and they are all concentric uh, and in the middle of this uh, dot board kind of thing so so yeah generally interlab comparisons pts pt is more sophisticated than interlab comparison so which gives jet score and en score which are uh, which are important uh, uh, which are like a reliability indicator and performance indicators uh, for a lab and uh, yeah while selecting this equipment also there should be some uh, uh, because in manufacturing line so equipment uh, production line uh, measurements are very much important so 
so basically the sun simulators which are used uh, in production lines they basically impact uh, the error the unset changes of course so generally now that triple a plus is a more uh, uh, boom so so most of the technologies and also monopark and all some technologies like hjt monopark and topcon and all, so on so forth so the, so they require long pulse as well as they require uh, uh, more uh, uh sophisticated uh, sun simulators like triple a plus and all so i i don't want to go in detail so and so basically this is the non uniformity maps for uh, full cell half cut cell and we we generally measure at every inch of the sun simulator and so we know the error contributing in the measurements so this is a such slide like major uh, contributors in power measurements because the power is the driving factor in the pv market so one is the spectral mismatch correction because that is a majorly uh, neglected thing and non uniformity and uh, calibration and repeatability of the equipment itself so next uh, is the one 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 such issue is the one such issue is the one such, wow, one such issue is the uh, cell to module loss itself uh, in a manufacturer manufacturers generally yeah while new manufacturers or startup manufacturers generally uh, so so when when purchasing a cell and when building the model so they think that uh, cell power and model power will almost match or efficiency will match but but in general uh, there are a lot of uh, loss components uh, these are called cell to model loss components so i don't want to go in detail because uh, it will take some time so there are geometric losses optical losses and electrical losses and uh, yeah so so each component so sorry uh, to interrupt sir uh, we have hello yeah, yeah uh, sorry I'm, to interrupt sir uh, we have only 5 minutes left for yeah yeah i am done i am i am having only last two slides okay that's all okay is it okay, okay. so yeah so basically with uh, some uh, using some uh, this is one such case of uh, increasing the thickness of the uh, interconnect so how the efficiency can be increased so this is one example of uh, how ctm loss can be improved and basically this is the entire uh, for any organization uh, equipment uh, and components materials personnel and process these are the four forum or uh, forums which are predominantly present in any organization so uh, so being a startup or new to this uh, market so one should aware of the equipment uh, whether the uh, technical specs they have given uh, whether matching with the actual mission uh, delivered which is being supplied by the man uh, vendors and the components also one should ask the certificates and reports test reports uh, from the uh, suppliers component suppliers or material suppliers and personal of course the skill uh, skill level and uh, the uh, the awareness and how much the uh, proficiency is there uh, in 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 delivering the results or in delivering the process and then last is the process related itself so the process itself as I, i have shown ctm is the one process related error so so yeah so actually we offer the entire uh, 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 end to end solution which enhances the production uh, quality in uh, manufacturers as well as uh, things so i just want to quickly show you these slides why uh, so the failure uh, bath tub braids uh, bath tub curves and so how can we we can be uh basically after power plant installation so basically while doing regular maintenance oh and um and all by keeping up, up uh yeah the power plant in good condition so we can reduce that by maintaining at regular intervals and the risks and uh, risks in every step is there starting from the uh, designing uh, uh designing to uh, manufacturing and installation and commissioning so everywhere there are risks so that's why iec uh, has made uh, some standards like iec re standards and even iec standards for starting from the uh, designing of the model to designing of power plant design uh, and even post commissioning commissioning and after uh, and even o and m things so 
so at every juncture they have there are some standards which are like gate gateways to to go to the next step if any one of these are bypassed then the the quality chain or the quality cannot be guaranteed and the standards general standards which are being uh, mandated by uh, bas or iec uh, they are not enough because the reliability the product life is the more important than just design so so it's something like a small hammer the standards and all so they are not much impacting so we need a big hammer like tower hammer so which definitely quantifies and uh, reduces the risk and uh, uncertainty of it so that's all i think i i will uh, conclude uh, this so yeah any questions i can appreciate yeah thank you so much i'm now stopping my presentation uh, yeah thank you sir for sharing your views and experience with our audience i hope it will help in their exploration of the renewable energy sector now we would like to move on to our next speaker as uh, bindu madhvi who is the manager of india energy storage alliance over, over to you ma'am yeah ma'am your uh, screen is visible um uh, we are not able to hear you uh, i hope i am audible and visible both yeah yeah uh, ma'am ma'am your screen is visible uh, but uh, you are not uh, sorry uh, i am not able to yeah. see you ma'am can we can see you and we can hear you as well okay ma'am you can continue yeah thank you so uh okay. hello everyone first of all thank you renewable energy mart for giving me this opportunity i'm very humbled and uh, privileged to speak with the uh, enthusiasts and companies who can actually change the whole economics of this power sector as well as the greatest vision of our prime minister of making india as a atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan say person from the electric field i can see uh, a lot of opportunities towards this emerging technologies whether it is energy storage or e mobility so before going jumping into the subject let me introduce myself i am bindu madhavi i am a manager for india energy storage alliance which is a leading association for electric vehicles and energy storage so i have been part of uh, energy storage alliance uh, right from two and a half years right now as a whole i am a power sector policy expert with coming of decade of experience in this field so i am also chairing policy working group of isa along with our member companies uh, and and we are working with the government as well as the industry like a mediator how what is the needs for the industry and what policies and regulations are need, needed in place before joining cs i ha, i also i was associated with the leading transmission companies also thermal generation companies i have done my masters in electrical power engineering with business from university of strathclyde so uh, just to introduce isa we are now 130 members plus company we have uh, exicom emraj isp energy world bank all of them as partners of our association sorry uh, leadership circle of our association also we have one that uh, many mous which we have signed with this global alliances like uh, us uk etc so uh, we make you know only vision and mission for isa is to make in energy grid and transportation sector more competitive and there should india should be a global leader in research manufacturing and adoption of storage technologies or e mobility technologies by 2022 so uh, uh before i jump into topic like what are the opportunities is in there in front of it so i should say there are the policies and regulations which should go hand in hand with the technology developments or the other developments which is going across the country that can actually lead a way it can show a pathway how we can uh, go across or what are the opportunities we can make sure so right from 2013 there was a good development in the government as well as in the state governments there is a 
in increase interest on the energy storage and e mobility companies with the right from there we are actively in, in, engaged with the government on that in 2013 mop and ca cea central electricity authority they had made a task force and they are uh, done a study on what kind of large scale integration is going to happen because of renewables in the future and what is the need for storage and what kind of technologies is required to make the firm good uh, grid power firm similarly national electricity mobility mission plan was launched in 2030 with a vision document by dh to make uh, our transportation sector more into sustainable and go into the ev way from between the 2020 to 27 so in uh, starting with that we are working with the both dh and ministries different ministries we have done a reports or we are doing advocacy on the regulation changes what it is needed much Uh, important policy which has come up recently in 2021 is about the pli production linked incentive which was allotted by prime minister central cabinet for uh, 50 gigawatt hour of acc battery manufacturing so when this battery manufacturing is coming up in that large scale it just not limited to the 50 gigawatt there is a a uh, long term vision which is uh, behind this one like not just 50 we have three different areas wherein we need the demand say it is a power sector or the e mobility sector or the digital sector or the telecom sector all these areas we need storage or batteries so uh, with that in vision acc uh, advanced chemistry cell and battery manufacturing was approved by chief minister uh, prime minister for 18100 crores so with that when there is a indigenous manufacturing which is coming in in india there is equally importance of getting the demand also from india what is the demand is met by that demand is met by energy storage uh, uh energy storage applications in the power sector equally in the e mobility sector so why there is a need for uh, flexible resources in the indian grid like everybody like we know uh, even tushar baladwaj was defining like how the indian grid is going up what is the uh, next vision 175 gigawatt by 2022 and 450 400 gigawatt by uh, 2030 that is the long term vision that ministry has come up with so if when there is a increase in trend of renewables there is a decreasing in trend, trend of conventional so when there is a decrease in conventional uh, sources we have to make sure that somewhere this power has to be firm we have to make sure grid is firm because solar cannot be there all the day or wind cannot be there all the day it can be fluctuating a lot of times so there should be some technology which should be available that can make the flexible resource so that is where this battery storage or generally energy storage has to come up with uh, so ca advocates that there should be a, a capacity of 107 gigawatt of hour of battery st storage support is required by 2020 30 as a re target so when i am saying this kind of generation capacity mix is coming up so where does it all go so like i am saying when i am saying energy storage generally of notion energy storage is only a pump storage or a uh, lithium or lead acid acid no there is a different kind of chemistries that are available under this technology say electrochemical mechanical bulk chemical gravitational thermal storage as well as electrical storage power electronics etc so we have to choose the right technology uh, for the right application then only this asset class will be useful uh, for the all the sections of the power sector or any kind of sector which we are utilizing it so when i'm talking about the uh, utilizing of battery storage in the grid services it is not limited to the re integration it can do much more than re integration what all it can do it can act as a system operator for the frequency like uh, from the indian electricity grid code from 2013 we are under the frequency of 49.5 to 50.5 uh, around so now there is a greater importance when we are going towards one nation one frequency and one uh, one grid kind of uh, uh, culture tomorrow then we have to make sure that frequency has to be come to the normal level that is 50 hertz as early as possible that 
that point that 50 watt capacity which which will bring is the storage also the flexible ramping ramp up or ramp down which is difficult for the thermal power plants or any other thermal or conventional plants which can be done by use of battery storage similarly for the transmission uh, and distribution referral if with this kind of 450 kind of 450 gigawatt of uh, re is coming up in the future by 2030 there is also equally portion of coming up of transmission and distribution so imagine how much of investment we are going to do so when a storage is envisaged during this planning so some amount of this tnd can be uh, reduced and that burden can be left off from the total investment similarly for the re integration for the re curtailment issues can be solved for the generator same, same time capacity firming can be there one more good operator of a microgrid that is the behind the meter or like we say solar pv etc so what is the problems with the solar pv right now uh, so when a developer is uh, producing the power itself from the uh, from its own universe of say it is a captive or whatever internal uses or for the industry whatever it is doing so it is a some amount of the power is going back to the grid so this might cause some trouble to the discoms to adjust this unknown power or sudden supply of power from the this solar pv how that can be managed by managing of a storage utility at a, at a utility side that is at the discom side or at a some part of the generator side of the solar pv generator side so this amount this whatever power excess power that they are generating that can be stored and they can be reutilized when there is a night time or when there is no sun or uh, when on a rainy day this battery storage can be of help so that's how they have this storage has large capacities of avenue models so like i explained before uh, solar and wind is both we cannot explain like how it can be uh, what kind of differences it can come so why wind and solar profile can be match up and demand shape can be made up in the uh, form power using the bal this balancing resource that is storage so i saw we uh, as a part of our uh, nls team or our uh, consulting team we do the complete analysis and complete detailed study on the both stationary storage and the electric vehicle market we emphasize that there will be a capacity of minimum of 328 gigawatt hour by 2027 and a worst case it can be at least 196 gigawatt hour demand so similarly we come to the uh, e-mobility sector there is a total demand of 335 gigawatt hour is expected from the electric vehicle so the you as you can see there is lot of future for both these sectors which is coming up and there is a lot of scope for opportunities to pick up. So the similarly, the manufacturing bit, the one of the main concern from the say from the government parties or the developers is about the price portion, which is slightly higher before. So that, that is where I'm coming over the years from the 2012 to 2019. There is a very significant decrease in the total price, which itself. is showing in the manufacturing corporation which is coming out with the re tenders they do come with the storage because of this very reason that storage is affordable right now with many kind of technologies available right there you just have to choose what is the right technology for the right for uh, right application that's all if that matching is done uh, definitely it is uh, affordable for anyone so this is what i'm talking about the seki one point gigawatt of tender which come in 2020 uh, along with the RE plus storage kind of project, which is released by Seki, you can they have there was a cost of BES 4.3 per kilowatt hour, and for PHS it is a not not 57 per PH uh, 4.04 rupees per kilowatt hour. You can see very slight difference between these two. The reason being. Uh, Still, you have when you compare with the pumped hydro, you have many issues like it cannot come into the. It should have a must run process. It will take ten years of time to come into. Uh, entire picture has to run, and they, there is also uh, clearances part that is of a very mess. We I have to explain you now. There is a uh, out of hundred hydro plants available in India, only forty percent or fifty percent is right now in working condition. So in that scenario, what is more flexible? 
to look at the energy storage technologies just not limited to pumped hydro we have to see wherever the technology should be open the technology should be agnostic so whichever technology will come and qualify in that portion that has to pick up and that has to given a chance so what are the generation policies that is available for the power sector where we can see NEP that is National Electricity Policy, which is a Bible next to Electricity Act, which can define whole electricity uh, or power sector in India. That uh, recently has released its draft, and it was recommending to importance on the storage and the capacity to be included, and a midterm view is needed for the planning and etc. Similarly, we have National Wind Solar Hybrid Power Policy, which talks about any states and uh, central policies which are targeting. Re plus storage or Re when I am saying it should not be it don't have to be just solar wind plus storage it can be solar plus storage same time wind plus storage based on the requirement they have to pick up the right thing that's all so we have also RTC power that is the around the clock power for discom is needed when they are uh, RTC is taking from a discom is taking RTC power from a generator that is Re generator. Then he somewhere he has to make sure he has to give the 85% of availability to them. So how they can make sure that of 85% that they can be backed up by either by any kind of generation. It can be conventional, it can be storage or it can be gas. Their storage plays a major role. Uh, this tender is rolled out also recently. So we are going to see the results within few days. Similarly, ancillary service regulation for the frequency deviations or uh, profile or any demand and supply things, we have three major areas there, primary resource, secondary resource, and tertiary resource, all in where uh, battery storage is going to come up and support the grid integration. So there, a grid can, uh, there also storage is going to play a major role. Similarly, like I explained to you about the PV, uh, PV, solar PV plus storage kind of uh, um, market models, that models is being incentivized by Ministry of Power right now so that they avoid the un unutilized or sudden power to the discount so that they can also manage same time it will be beneficial to the consumer as well so that is plus they are getting incentives that kind of models is now getting up there is a lot of opportunity at that front and we also have a, a national electricity plan transmission there also they are talking about the importance of energy storage and we have different states which has come up with uh, different po solar policies or wind policies or wind solar hybrid policies wherein they are talking about the large range of opportunities where uh, uh, sorry storage can contribute to similarly coming to the e-mobility sector we have this uh, great fame india scheme which was launched in 2015 and fame 2 was launched in 2019 april which is going to end up to March 2022 might be extended also, but part of that they are they are issuing uh, uh, many of the benefits or incentive to the developer, pirate projects, charging infra, etc. So there is a uh, very promising market there through Fame India scheme. Similarly, we have EV charging stations which are coming up. Uh, they, they, because EV charging is not any kind of generation, distribution, or transmission, Ministry of Power has decided to treat this EV charging, whatever is a de-licensed activity. So there, the whoever the uh, opportunity belongs there, they don't have to go and do the entire work of licensing and going through the clearances, etc. When the when they do all the permissions in in place, they can just simply start this charging schemes. So that is also a one huge opportunity out there. Uh, similarly, we have National Mission on Transformative Mobility and Storage, which talks about the strategy and what kind of structure is required. Similarly, we have phased manufacturing program. Right now, we have a lot of dependency on China and other Asian countries for the batteries or the e-mobility. Uh, so to lessen or to burden uh, less reduce, reduction of that kind of dependency, this phased manufacturing program has come up. Within five years, what all the raw materials that are required for the EV that will be done in the internally or indigenously that will be used. On Sorry to interrupt, ma'am. Uh, you have just uh, two minutes uh, left for the presentation. You had handed out or owe me at 12.20 and you are talking, you are asking me to end up at 12.30. Uh, no, no issues, ma'am. No, 
Okay. So what are the uh, startups that are uh, available across energy storage value chain? Uh, there is an equal startups which are available for the OEMs or the, for the recycler, recyclers in the component manufacturers in the raw material. Similarly, you have fleet operators, cab aggregators, charging infra companies, battery recycling. Uh, one more thing is one in, in development is the developers or IT software which is required for all these startups. Uh, alliances, design and engineering, there is a lot of scope for the startups for the storage that and EV technology providers. Also, I can see current opportunities like I explained you over before what are the policies are available. So a storage provider can be an independent asset or it can be integrated with the RE or it can be a DISCOM asset. Uh, just that it has to be, have an open access and connection to the grid. Uh, and it can act as a frequency response, so it can be an independent resource uh, there as well. Also for the battery manufacturing, there is a lot of scope and there is a lot of opportunities right now. And there are also many state policies which are offering these benefits to MSMEs. There is a behind the meter applications, micro grids, and there, there is a clear case of replacement of diesel generators uh, with the batteries in coming few years. So there is a lot of opportunity behind the meters at the internal levels for the telecom towers, raw material manufacturing, etc. Coming to what are the opportunities for e-mobility e startups, there is a lot of opportunities in this space already. Many of them has taken place. Many are enthusiasts has, uh, has been uh, given a very significant amount of uh, uh, investments there. So you can see there are digital technologies will be coming up. PV logistics startups are there. Innovative solutions who can give for the EV infra and business model. That happened. It is a Euler Motor has announced 30 crores for, from its new investors. Hyderabad based solar rooftop has raised $2.4 million in equity investment from carbon neutrality ventures. Similarly, uh, these are some of the other examples which, ha which has a huge potential and you, you can see new commitments of millions worth for the startups. So there is a clear indication that there is a lot of scope for both these markets. Uh, some of the success stories can be uh, Shell backed up by Smart EV Plus Motors has announced that he has raised undisclosed amount for the, from the Angel investors. Also, Simple Energy, which has uh, announced many electrical scooters. Uh, in recent times, we can see the trend of new electric scooters coming up from the startup. Similarly, Gurgram based uh, uh, electric field startup Urban Mobility Moving has partnered with EV OEMs uh, and launched operations three cities, uh, Delhi, Bangalore, and Pune. One OEM being Hero Electric. And they have raised 1 million of seed funding just from the senior executives of uh, these investment banks and private equity companies in the one single angel roundup that happened. Uh, so to provide much more financial assistance, there is a from the Department of Started Startup India Seed Fund Scheme that has been approved on 1st April 2021 for uh, I think around 758 crores or something. It was expected. The, about 3,600 startups can be make use of from that. So as part of ISA, we are doing this startup cohort program. It's an initiative for uh, raising startups in this mobility. So we, what we offer is about the industry connect, government connect, invest and investment connect. Already we have uh, many startup companies part of this and made utilize of this platform. And we have uh, MOUs with the Investment India, Startup India, Ministry of Renew and Renewable Energy, so which that uh, startup companies can be make utilize of this platform. So if you want to know about it, you can uh, reach out to me. I can just uh, um, connect you to the right person. One of the success of this startup member of ISR is a, it is a uh, Finergy, an esteemed XISR member. He has recently uh, signed an It is a very huge. So he utilized the platform. Mm -hmm. It's just one example there are many more such examples but uh, if you want to know more about it or you want to have a one-to-one -one discussion you can write to me or you can uh, reach out to me for further discussion thank you thank you ma'am for sharing your experience with all of us now we, we will move on to the questions so uh, my question is to uh, Bindu ma'am are you available? Yeah, yeah, please. 
please yeah how is the uh, yeah how is the energy storage in the coming years in relation to the developing countries need in terms of cost of imports local development and technological developments so uh, that's what i'm trying to explain you over my ear, this one also i can see there is a lot of opportunities there since acc battery, battery manufacturing now is the next more important point for us even prime minister of india has said battery manufacturing will be the champion sector in next coming few years so there is a uh, already many incentives which are available and there is also phased manufacturing program slowly they will incentivize the local manufacturers and the other manufacturers there will be uh, some restrictions from the uh, exports or imports from other countries then there will be a improved uh, what i say if there is a 60% and 40% of uh, imports and exports then there will be a complete dependence on this 60% indigenous manufacturers so there will be a lot of scope for them to business you know uh, that kind of uh, uh, opportunities are available also since many of the regulations are in place there are many opportunities also coming up with the re growth as a ancillary services growth anything else thank you ma'am yeah uh, thank you ma'am uh, uh, we have uh, we have uh, uh, we will move on to the uh, next question to to sajid sir sir uh, sir are you available what help the indian government is doing with the uh, start for the startups in terms of solar segment so government of india has been funding programs for uh, solar energies and other renewable energy startups some of them are startup uh, india is you to love that which you have when uh, government is also offering loan for uh, rooftop solar pv project at a very minimum rate and there there are different other options also like off grid and decentralized solar pv application programs are there where you can register and uh, you can apply for then pradhan mantri uh pradhan mantri uh, kisan urja suraksha evam uh, uthan abhiyan these are different atal jyoti yojana is one of them and what exactly the government is aiming at is also helping you to manufacture solar modules or anything which is related to solar the government wants india to manufacture it and or import it from somewhere else so what the aim of the government is that india should be self reliant that india should manufacture each and everything on its own and should not be dependent on any other country so the government is also helping you to get angel investors for your project if you have any idea in your mind you can get angel investors who are ready to fund your ideas if they feel in the sector yes and even in the power sector also yes mandate uh, standards are required like is 14286 uh, Uh, which is equivalent to IEC six one two one five and uh, IES six one seven three zero safety qualification. So these two are currently mandated, and apart from that, PID also mandated. So these three are are major standards which to avail any uh, MNR subsidies or government subsidies. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, uh, my next question is: uh, What can be the common reasons to damage the PV modules? Uh, do you provide uh, testing services yeah reasons and failure uh, some of the failures are uh, and reasons behind them i explained in my slide i think if the participant is joined late uh, maybe he, he or she can give the recording but yeah i will give some brief answer to it so reasons are like uh, at every there are several stages in a project so at every stage there should be monitoring mechanism should be in place so that will uh, eliminate the errors to be move forward or uh, carry forward so so those those kind of gateway checks we should implement so basically the standards are uh, they are designed in such a way that to ensure uh, starting uh, from the manufacturing to the or execution a commissioning and post commissioning and even operational maintenance so at every stage they have defined well defined the uh, standards and of course yeah we do offer uh, all uh, you know every from 
from factory to field. That's what uh, even the title also mentioned. So we do offer a end-to-end -end solution from manufacturing side to uh, factory audits and uh, inspections, cell to mode, CTM improvement, and so on and so forth, and power plant inspections, pre-dispatch inspections, and so on. So we do offer, yeah, we are a set accredited lab and we, we do offer such services. Thank you so much. I hope. Thank you, sir, for answering the question. Uh, so okay. my question will be to Naresh, sir. sir. Are you available? So if you don't mind, uh, I have some another meeting or I need to wind up. So is it OK? Can yeah. Yeah, it's OK. Yeah. Sir. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so my next question is to Naresh, sir. Are you available? Yes, I am available. Tell me. Uh, sir, is there any financial assistance available for the startups from central or state governments working working in renewable energy sector? Yeah, so majorly this question is answered by Tushajit already, but I will add my point to it. So since uh, since government is promoting to move ahead with solar and the startup as well, so according to my knowledge, government is providing 50% of subsidy uh, on the total investment, which is up to 1 crore. And government is giving another subsidies and surcharges benefit to the startups who are willing to go ahead with solar project or let's say any another investment they want to move in the startup field. So apart from this, all these uh, 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 points are covered by Tushalji. Okay, sir. Uh, my next question. Uh, my next question is uh, that uh, we are a startup based company in Bangalore and would like to know about the steps. To raise funding okay so funding can be raised in two ways either there is either the startup want to raise funds for themselves or they can raise funds for solar project so if they want to raise uh, funds for themselves they have to approach to the government uh, not government to the banks and financial institutions they have to show their collateral collateral means they have to show some security it can be their own property it can be their own uh, any, any 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 property or we, we can call it any house something like that on that basis, government will provide loan, and that, that that loan has to be business loan, and that loan can be used for their uh, business activities. And the second is the uh, loan for the solar project. What has to, what steps company must take to take loan for the uh, solar project is that first they have to finalize the power user who is willing to use, who is willing to uh, provide per unit price to the particular solar company. And on that basis, that particular uh, uh, interest of the uh, power user has to be shown to the bank or any IPP uh, that this is the power user who is willing to pay per unit price at this rate. And this is the security. This obstacle is giving us. It can be in the form of bank guarantee or it can be in the form of uh, payment security. On that basis, either bank or any IPP can provide funding. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, we are thankful to all the speakers at this uh, webinar. We are grateful for the time and effort you all took to share your thoughts and experiences with our audience. I would also like to thank our sponsor, Mitsui Chemicals Group, for sponsoring and supporting this webinar. Chemicals is one of the world's leading petrochemicals manufacturer and is driving forward its next generation business with deep sighted focus on new. business segments like energy solution business, medical solution business, and IoT solution business, and many more. Since we are entering a new growth phase of the renewable energy sector in India, your comments were very timely. I believe our audience can benefit from your experience. Your enthusiasm is contagious, and we hope that our users will use your suggestions in their renewable energy journey. Thank you again for your contribution. We would also like to invite you all to create an account of renewable energy mart and grow your business we have posted the link in the chat box we'll be sharing the recording of the session with all the participants shortly via mail please give us your feedback so that we can improve our activities thanks for all the participants for their time stay safe and stay healthy all of you we we'll meet you in our next webinar in the coming weeks thank you Thank you. Thank you.